How are you, everybody? This is Yang Hua Jin Missionary Cemetery for foreigners. Here are a total of 417 people, of which 145 are missionaries and their families. There is a catacomb of the tombs of the Christian people who hid from the early Christian persecution in Rome. Tombs means dead, but for the Christian like us, death means resurrection. I'm not going to tell you a formal record of the missionaries who are well known to you today. I would like to share a story of the sacrifice and the touching that were not seen in their bed. Therefore, I tell you that Yang Wadi Missionary Cemetery official guide guidelines are much different from this one. I felt very eerie when I first visited Honduras Anniversary Memorial Church a few years ago. By the look of the church surrounded by graves, when it happened to me to come to the church alone late at night and had to go through the cemetery, it was like the one I had seen in movies with Dracula. It was very scary and terrifying. However, after I have learned the hardship, and devotion of the missionaries for this guiding ministry. Now, even if I sleep alone overnight next to the cemetery, I think I will get along pretty well. The cemetery hasn't changed, but my mind has changed. Today, you will only see the outward graves at this foreign missionary cemetery. For some reasons, 130 years ago, they became a grain of wheat in an unfamiliar land called Joseon. Now we need to consider whether it has grown to be tens of thousands of years. Let me tell you one example why we enter into the cemetery. A few years ago in May, a reporter from a Korean daily newspaper went to the Uisong, Gyeongsangbukdo, to cover the calling team. Somehow, the meeting was held in the Uisong church in Gyeongbu. And the reporter was very surprised by the fact that the church is over 130 years old. Moreover, there are about 30 churches that are 100 years old or more in Uisong. When the reporter found out that all of these churches that were derived from one church, it was enough to bring the attention, so he started to investigate further. It happened in 1894 when a man named Kim Soo Young from Uisong went to the Cheongdo market one day to go shopping. After listening to a sermon by a foreign missionary on the street, he became very curious about what gospel really is. Two years later, he visited a missionary group in Daegu. Afterward, Kim Soo Young finally received the gospel from the missionaries and established a church. This is the first Bibong church built in Uisong in 1900. The young lady who heard the gospel from this Bibong church built Uisong church in the future. Over this happening, about 30 churches were built in Uisong. And after that, a total of 150 churches were built. Please think for a moment. 130 years ago, a Korean was impressed by a street missionary by a foreign who can barely speak Korean. That's when the history of the building 150 churches began, and 70% of the 60,000 people in Uisong country are Christian. Christianity has become a highly respected religion in Uisong, with many Christians serving and devoting themselves to the local people, more of the foreign missionary known as Mr. Baird did not live in Uisong, but lived in Pyongyang. On his way down to Busan, he walked 100 miles a day and preached on the street whenever he had the time. It is hard to imagine how tired it must have been considering poor traffic conditions at that time, and riding a donkey was an only option. If it's hard for this person to walk alone, I'm doing my ministry just by walking on this path. If I hadn't done street evangelism while doing this, there would be no 150 churches in Uisong. I took one missionary as an example. 
All of missionaries who are sleeping here are the willing to plant a seed in this foreign land, those who sow. Now, let's go to the cemetery and meet each and every one of them. We will start from I Grove, Turner, and Abison for better work. Please keep the silence and pray a during tour. He is the second bishop of the Anglican Church and the one who made Korea's YMCA the framework it is today. YMCA still has its headquarters building in Jongno and has contributed a lot to youth mission since its establishment. The first official missionary to set foot in Korea was in 1885 with the missionary Underwood, missionary Appenzeller. It started when they arrived at Jemul Popo. In 1885, just before the failure of the Kim ok Gospel Group in 1884, the Joseon government Daewon-gun, a large-scale national isolation policy was carried out. Anyone who did something similar to evangelism preaching the gospel on the street was punished immediately. Therefore, missionary organizations in the United States and Canada have focused in the indirect mission. This is to avoid the trouble with the Joseon government. It was not a dispatch, but an opportunity to dispatch doctors and teachers through the indirect mission. In a way, if you look only at the situation at the time, newspaper articles such as medicine and science were distributed through the missionaries in Joseon. It was a good opportunity to be transplanted directly to the use of Joseon. Because as a part of their mission, they build churches and school hospitals together and train juniors. The representative missionary is Abison, who is sleeping here. He moved to Korea in 1893 as a doctor and served as the third director of the Jejun One, which managed the royal family. One day on a sabbatical in 1900, this man was preaching in front of a large audience in New York. A steel company called Severance who heard that Joseon's medicine was so low that many people were dying. The president was just about to build a hospital in India, but he changed his mind and built a hospital in Seoul, which is what it is now. It becomes Severance Hospital. At the time, the hospital was established with the money of donated by Severance of $10,000. And since then, the hospital has been continued through his children. The hospital was expanded through donations. Even now, if you go to Severance in Shinchon, you can see the passage of his speech on the donor's wall lily. You are no happier to receive it than I am to give it. Through 120 years of dedication, Severance Hospital has been dedicated to the medical development of the Korea and the prevention of infectious disease. Made a great contribution, the original Korean who does not know the name of the Severance now. If Severance gave all that money to his children as an inheritance, what would have happened if he hadn't made such a commitment? Money seems to be a living creature. This is the graveyard of the Undowed family, who is called the father of the Korean mission, and seven people slept over four generations. There is this man arrived at Jemul Popot on Easter morning in 1885, but he did not choose Eastern Popot. 
It was east morning when he arrived after a long journey through Japan. He founded Semunan Church, the first Presbyterian church in Korea, and established Yonhi Specialty. Yonhi University established by Underwood and Severance established by Missionary Everson merged in 1957. Yonsei University, a prestigious university in Korean history, is born. Here the father-son relationship of the William Earl Shaw. William Earl Shaw above founded the Bogwon University in Daejeon City. He had introduced an army chaplain system in Korea during the Korea War on 1950. The little headstone in front is his son named of Hamilton Shaw. He was born in Pyongyang and has always lived as a Korean. While attending Harvard Medical School, the Korean War broke out. Early in the war, he wrote to his father saying, I have lived my life as if I was son of a Korean, and now my country is in a state of war. Starting like this, after convincing his father that he would go to war immediately because of it is not right during General MacArthur's Incheon Amphibious Operation. He participated in the war as a Marine Interpreter Officer. After that, after making a breakthrough in the Battle of Yonsei University and the Battle of Hangzhou Padres, at Unpyeongni, where he entered for the reconnaissance, he was killed by an enemy sniper at the age of 28. He had three young sons. It turned out that one of them was serving as a chief judge for the state of New Jersey. The deceased asked in his will to be buried in Korea because I'm Korean. I'm so shabby here. He's honored at Arlington National Cemetery because he's an officer who received the Silver Star Medal of Service from the U.S. government. He could have been buried, but he chose Korea even after he died. But these people, we are enjoying freedom and democracy now. Before our entrance, I mentioned Uisong Church and Bibong Church. This is Missionary Baird. He founded Sungshil University, Korea's first university in Pyongyang, which was built during the Japanese colonial period. Dr. Man Shik Jo and Dong Ju Yoon, resistance poetry doctor, Byung Ok Jo, they has contributed greatly to the formation of an independent state of Korea by nurturing many nationalist independence activists such as, as a national university. Sungshil University was shut down in 1940 for not cooperating with the Japanese. These are the only Japanese person named of Shoda Gai with his wife buried here in Yanghwajin. It's weird how a Japanese man was buried in a foreign missionary cemetery. The answer will be explained at the very end. This is the tomb of the whole family who built the medical clinic that became the foundation of Korea University Medical School. Her mother is Rosetta Hall who entered the country in 1891 under pregnant. Her daughter died of an endemic disease when she was three years old, and her husband died of cholera. If you look at her lifelong diary in Yang Hwa Jin Dojeta Hall, I have not read any writing blaming Lord anywhere. If we are she, there must have been a passage that lamented that wise Lord gave a trial and pain us who are doing mission work with difficulty. Son Sherwood introduced system of Christmas seal and made a great contribution to the eradication of pulmonary tuberculosis in Korea. You can see a Christmas seal which was designed by him when you go to the Kim Il-sung Villa, where located at the Hwa Jin Po Beach in Gangwon-do province. Surprisingly, the first design was a turtle ship, which was Japanese hate it due to the bad experience made by all the battle with Korea. This was in 1932, when the Japanese Empire was in the midst of the planning the Great East Asia War, how much the Japanese Empire must have hated him. He was charged with various charges and deported to the India in 1940, 
where he was not even allowed to enter the country until liberation in 1945. He was the first Methodist missionary who came to Korea to board at the same boat as the unload missionaries. He established the first Methodist church called the Jongdong Methodist Church. And he established the school of Beje University at Daejeon. He disappeared due to the sinking of the ship. When he went by boat to attend the Bible translation conference held in Mokpo in 1908, there is also something we must not overlook. The sacrifice of the missionaries are great, but their children by generation to generation also continued to contribute a lot of dedication to Korea's modern education and economic development. The cemetery in front of you is Alice Appendel the daughter of the missionary Appenzel. He was the third dean of the Iwa Hakdang and expanded the Iwa Women's University to its present location. At that time, she prayed while leaving for the United States to receive her donation. But she said she would rather pray for the ship to be wrecked because she could not sure to receive so big money. However, uh, in two years, she had secured with a large amount of $450,000 for the site of the present Iwa Women's University. The surprising fact is that at the time, there were only 100 students at Iwa school then, but now there are more than 30,000 Iwa students in this site. Looking to the future of hundreds of years or what, they built a giant Central Park in Manhattan, New York. It's amazing how they've seen in hundreds of years ago that they built a huge Central Park in Manhattan, New York without waste of the money for welfare right now like us even is difficult. It's astonishing to see their inside hundreds of years later. I couldn't forget the word on gravestone when I faced the first time. So I wanted to see a lot of hidden story about her. Let's take a look at the word on gravestone. If I had a thousand lives to give, Korea should have them all. It was built for Ruby Candy by her friend in US when she died in 1908. Her parents were very worried about she going on a mission to Korea at a young age. But at the age of 25 in 1907, she came to Korea as a teacher and was immersed in missionary work as a church school teacher in Songdo. However, he went to heaven from the severance emergency room due to acute appendix in nine months. After she came to Korea as a missionary, she prayed that she would allow many missionaries to come to Korea through her even she was just sent up as an ordinary church school teacher not sent as a doctor as a missionary. When I saw this woman, I wanted to ask Lord, why did you send her to Korea if you are going to take her in nine months? But since then, I have been able to find many hidden stories through mission history books. Before she passed away, she wrote this letter to her parents in hospital. This is Ruby Kendrick's letter. She usually said, after my ministry in Korea is too short, I wanted to write to more young people from my country to come to Korea, she said. And also, if I had a thousand lives to give, Korea should have them all. She wrote this last letter to her mom just before dad in hospital. This letter was sent to the Texas Warwick Youth Mission Group through her mother in a few days later after her death. The organization collected donations and produced this word on Gravestone 1908. Twenty young people who were impressed by this article volunteered as missionaries and many of them were entered to Korea as a missionary the following year. 
Lord had reason that she prayed that many missionaries would come to Korea because of her. Just like her wish, Korea is now a country that sends many missionaries to the world. I always show this letter to local pastors who came from Africa or Vietnam. From this point of view, there is nothing worse in God's work. In all ministries, whether small or large, there is only a pathway to convey the glory of the Lord to the world. Now, let me tell you about Shoda Gaichi, whom I mentioned during the loading process. He was a Japanese man who lives a corrupt life, and he would rather die if he had a chance. He drank alcohol and had a prodigal life. One day in 1902, he also fell drunk on the street of Taiwan after loved by gangsters, and no one cared for him. Everyone passing by pointed out and that he was dead. One of the people went to the Shoda and took away him to inn. He gave money to the innkeeper for inn cost and served meal when he woke up in the morning. And he left. In the morning, Mr. Shoda was so puzzled by the kindness he had received for the first time in his life. He asked to the innkeeper who was brought him to inn yesterday night. But the innkeeper replied to him that she does not know him, but she just guessed Korean because she spoke Korean. Mr. Shoda was very shocked in 1902 under Japanese imperialism. The damage of the Koreans was goes deeper and the Japanese were the enemies among the enemies of the Koreans. He truly couldn't understand why the Koreans saved him under this situation. Since then, Shoda was has undergone major change in his daily life since that he must repay this favor to Joseon while he is still alive. He came to Korea in September 1905. He took care of 3,000 orphans with his wife. After he established the Gyeongchang Orphanage in order to look after orphans who were born during the war until the liberation of Korea. Gyeongchang Orphanage is still operate as a Yongnak Orphanage within the Yongnak Church. It is also said that among the orphans there were children of independence fighters. Because he tried to save of the imprisoned independence fighters and they had many cases of the string and the dying helpless during the independence movement. After liberation, Shoda was deported to Japan when Korea was liberated on 1945 and entered Korea in 1961 again at the invitation of Pastor Han Gyeongji. Shoda who was with his opponents for over a year and passed away the following year. His funeral was held right here, and about 3,000 people from both countries gathered to participate in the funeral. The article was published extensively in Japanese newspapers by the owner of the Japanese newspaper. In addition, this content was specially featured by Korea's Hangul Ilbo at the same time, and the mutual surrender of the people of both countries was come down very quickly. It was a big opportunity which made a great contribution to the normalization of the diplomatic relations between two countries. What about to you? It is very similar to the conduct of the Samaritan that Jesus spoke in Luke of the Bible. The Jews who claimed to be God's chosen people ignored him and passed by. What did Jesus say then? The people who help a person in the trouble in need is a true neighbor. Can we contribute to the normalization of bilateral relations? Impossible for us. Can we build an open age and support 3,000 opponents? Impossible also for us. But we can do something. That is, we can buy a meal one time for someone. Look at the impact of the Korean's dedication to one bowl of buys. How many miracles have happened?